What do the rich buy that the poor don't even know is available for purchase? Under age 6 parties on private islands. If you're willing to fork out $35,000 for the player and $500 per showing, you can watch films that are currently in theaters in your own private home theater. Private boarding gate at certain airports, complete with showers, a spa, full bar, lounge, food, a bed, gym, sauna etc, total privacy, your luggage is scanned and taken through security by a concierge, and you're driven to the plane in a BMW 8 series, Lax has them now. Specialized household staff, when someone is truly mega rich, running their household takes the same complexity as running a small to mid size company, and management is skilled and compensated accordingly, don't think butler think head of operations at a luxury hotel, the staff at household managers oversee can be really specialized as well, for example, Larry Ellison has his own personal curator to oversee his collection of Asian art, they do things like, Advise on the purchase and sale of arts in his collection. Oversee storage and display of art housed on his property. Oversee process of lending art for storage and display at museums. The curator will often have their own staff to conduct actual conservation work, art transport, art installation, etc. So if you've already got an in-house crew of 7 people focused on your art collection alone, imagine how big your entire household staff is. That's why you've got a household manager. Private jet timeshares. For those not quite rich enough for their own private jet, or those rich people wanting to be a bit frugal. Time. All that crap you do. Commuting. Grocery shopping. Cooking. Cleaning your house. Waiting on hold. Paying bills. All those chunks of your life that are eaten up by minutiae. Rich people buy out of all that routine garbage. Time is all you really get in your life. Rich people buy it back. Landing 747S in small airports. I grew up around Lexington, KY. The region is huge on horses, particularly thoroughbred horses. The entire city is surrounded by horse farms, and these farms breed some of the best racing horses in the world. The rich and famous will often come here to buy thoroughbreds to add to their breeding stock. One such person is a Shia from Dubai, I think who owns his own private 747. Now the local airport isn't rated for 747s, and it's not legal to land one there unless it's an emergency. The Sheik doesn't care though and lands his 747 there anyways. The airport finds him every time he does this, which he is totally fine with paying. I've been told that many of the upgrades to the airport over the years were almost entirely funded with money from those fines. Pet cloning. Ex-boss was getting his dog cloned for $100k. You can buy houses ready to move in only with a suitcase. These house are more than fully equipped. Everything is already there like the whole furniture. Glasses. Knives. Forks. Spoons. Tissues and toilet paper. Towels. Toys and games for the children etc. A person to go to jail for you in your stead. This is a known phenomenon in Latin America but I imagine it happens in other places as well. Everyone knows about mega yachts, but the very rich also enjoy their own trains, or at the very least private super luxurious train cars. With their budgets it isn't expensive to rent space on freight lines and an engine, assuming they don't own their own. Sometimes a group of friends will hook their private cars together and motor around a continent having a big party. Luxury Ice Cubes. Gunso Luxury Ice Co. produces perfectly square ice blocks for minimum dilution and maximum cooling. Hand carved and completely clear. These cubes are sold in bags of 50 and each bag costs $325. I had a buddy who hired a driver, got him to get a chauffeur's license, and then made sure his Jaguar was long enough to meet criteria as a limo, and then he could legally drink in the back seat. When I traveled with him internationally, Someone met us at the door when we were dropped off, and they walked us to our plane. None of that customs security stuff occurred. Private performances with big name artists. I was on a yacht in the Virgin Islands and some mega yacht owner pretty close to us had Christina Aguilera flown in to perform for his guest on the mega yacht. We were close enough to see the performance, not close enough to pretend to be part of the party. Human organs. Steve Jobs used his fortune to game the system. 
A quote from the article, Jobs, couldn't pay for an organ, nor could he pay to cut the queue, but what, someone with Jobs resources, could do, according to liver transplant surgeons and ethicists, is to use money and mobility to improve the odds either by going to an area of the country where there are more organ donors, or by signing up at multiple transplant centers. It's not for anybody but the rich. It's called multiple listing. Practice some would say is unethical. Said Arthur Kaplan, co-chair of the United Nations Task Force on Organ Trafficking and chair of the Department of Medical Ethics at University of Pennsylvania. Left square bracket. I'm not rich but due to the fact that my dad was a top level govt official and I went to a very elite private boarding school. I hung out with some fabulously wealthy kids, i.e. rich parents. What surprised me is what a portion of very rich people don't buy I noticed that a surprising percentage of very wealthy people don't buy super fancy cars. For example one family who owned a world famous beverage company all drove around in nondescript SUVs or minivans. Some rich people are extremely flashy but others are almost manic about not being seen as crass. And to those people, a supercar is crass but apparently having a 10 million dollar home in Palm Beach is not crass or unique items. Occasionally you see in the news stuff like hat used in some popular movie auctioned for $80,000 or 5,000 year old Egyptian statue auctioned for $2 million and I think what kind of auction do you even go to buy that kind of thing? You think your platinum card is cutting it? Please. Centurion is the way to go. It'll cost 10 grand just to get one. Initial fee to join on the first annual fee. But you get everything. The Crystal Method are playing a local venue and you want to go backstage and shoot the it with Scott Kirkland because you're interested in donating to his favorite causes, because you've always admired the guy, his political opinions, and his music, that can be arranged. Want a table at Schwa in Chicago, Ian Vegas, Schloss Schoenstein in Frestenor, or Eragor in Tokyo? They'll get you in tomorrow. Need a full itinerary planned for a week in Paris? Need that new iPhone on day one but don't want to stand in line? Want to stay at the most luxurious place in Ibiza for the days Pete Tong is at the Blue Marlin? They do this in their sleep. It's a butler and concierge and local expert and best friend that knows a guy you'll ever meet. All just a call away. Standalone ice machines. These are under counter appliances whose sole purpose it to make ice. And not just any ice. The cheaper, $2,000 plus, ones make normal crescent shaped cubes. The more expensive one, $3,000 plus, make clear ice in cube shapes. And then pallet ice makers, $4,000 plus, which is the chibble ice like Sonic has. These are the more entry level models to boot. Some break 5 digits. I used to work for a manufacturer of these and at some point a lady was arguing with me because we were shipping a replacement part ground instead of next day air and she made a snide comment about if it were my ice machine she'd bet it wouldn't take this long. I told her, um, I don't have an ice machine. She snapped back all proud like she'd cornered me with, then how do you get ice? I told her from an ice tray and she replied with, well I don't have to do that. Yeah well for the next 3-5 business days you do itch. I do not miss that job at all. Access. Money buys you access to people, places and events. It also buys you in accessibility. I know a couple of billionaires. Both have yachts. That way they can get away from everyone else and just bring in the people they want to spend time with. The planet isn't that big. So my friend said he kept bumping into the same people all over the place. Gstard. Barbados. Wherever, same crowd of loaded people in the same restaurants and hotels. In the end he bought a yacht, kitted it out like he wanted it, and just flew in his pals. Actual smart homes. The Alexa Google home market is bringing it more mainstream. But for decades the wealthy elite have had smart home functionality through companies like Crestron. The controls go far beyond controlling your lights and thermostat, and integrate with more technologies. Relationships. I once worked at an Olympic horse ranch in Colorado, and the owner was from Seattle and was friends with someone that played guitar W. Kurt Cobain. Then talking to one of the writers, I had been to a party over the weekend that Mark Zuckerberg was at. That's when it hit me, when you're rich, you just know everyone, or know someone that knows them. Six degrees of separation is only for the masses. The elites is closer to two or one. Edit, I'm leaving March. She's out there. 
somewhere. One of the most popular commodities being invested in today is water. Health and happiness. Seriously. My ex-wife's family was uber wealthy and for a few years I got to experience a slice of how the other half live. It really is like a Aussie club. But staying on topic. Health. Everyone had a ton of meds. Minor things you wouldn't pay any attention to they had meds for. Red skin from the sun. Meds. Going though a tough month at work. They got pills for anxiety at the drop of a hat by their family doctor who was on speed dial. School stressing you out. You now have ADHD. Here's meds to focus. The more money you have. The less of a doctor you have and more of a recyclable drug dealer you get. As for the Osa happiness part. That just comes with the comfort of wealth. Their house was massive. And in the quiet. Gorgeous countryside outside of the city. There's so much you don't consider when you live middle to lower class. Noise is non-existent. You get so used to it living in a city or even in the suburbs. Their house. Couldn't see the neighbors. Can't hear anything except birds chirping. The street was so far from the house you couldn't hear the cars driving by. It was peace and silence. The thing is. It's exponential. If you're healthy and happy. You can work better. Think clearer. And that leads to better life decisions that result in you making more money. The cycle repeats. They treated their health as an investment. If they were healthy. They made more money. If they made more money. They could afford to be healthier. Gold pills that make your poop golden colored. I'm not even making it up. Look it up. Something I didn't even know existed until a month ago is a pot filler that's attached on the wall behind a stove so you can fill pots with water without having to carry them. Maybe not super expensive. But seems like something rich people would have. College admissions for their kids. Designer babies. Other people's designer babies. My dad barely qualifies as a millionaire in the loosest sense. He has told me that there is a certain threshold of wealth where you can just become reliably wealthier and wealthier without a big limit. It goes like this. He has a friend from Barclay who worked on Wall Street in the 80s and left with about 1 million dollars in his bank account by age 35. He used half of that money to start his own business which sold a product that was greatly needed by other businesses in the area. After about 4 years of that. He bought an apartment complex for some side income. After 7 years the apartment complex has paid for itself. And he spends the profit that year on becoming a majority shareholder in another small business in the area. After making money on that. He starts another small business this time only loosely run by him with a separate CEO to run the company. Using previously accumulated money he buys a golf course and now he is technically unemployed. But the dude makes between 3 and 4 million a year off of his passive income. He called me a little while ago saying that his son is a bit of a writ and that he wants to send him to the military school where I went. I wouldn't be surprised if his son never sees him. In the USA, certain states, 32, allow you to deposit funds or post a bond in lieu of car insurance. It varies from state in the amount, from 25,127,000. I remember first reading about this in the booklets from the DMV. Renting disabled people to cut in line at theme parks. Secret trap doors with hidden rooms. What mansion doesn't come with these standard come on. You can rent celebrities for your private events. Not just musicians. But bona fide actors and actresses. Super rich guy in Bel Air used to host his kid's birthday party in late October. So they went all out for a Halloween themed party. Everyone at the kids school was invited. Plus their own friends. Each year they'd hire some fantastic athlete to appear at the event. One year it was Tony Hawk. Another year it was some Olympic gold medal gymnastic winners. The one that threw me was when they hired Demi Moore, Anthony Kedis and Benicio Di Toro to be guests at the party. To hang out and pretend they were friends with the kid. Mind you this was a kids Halloween party. Set outside in a huge, massive garden. Spread out over tennis courts and lawns. With games. Buffets. Dessert tables. Taco stands. Omelette stands. BBQ. Pizza. Burgers. ETC. No booze. No one allowed inside. All the event staff were dressed in Halloween costumes. It was very cool. But it was sad to see Kedis and Di Toro sitting together commiserating. You could see the dark. The things we do for a paycheck look on their faces. They were at a kids party FFS. 
Demi was very nice. She brought her little doggies. It man. I don't know. Ramen that comes with double the flavor packets? That dude in the bathroom that hands out warm towels. People. The rich can buy all kinds of stuff but it's the truly rich that pay people to do everything for them. Often these people come from other countries and have no choice but to work and live in the homes of the rich or they risk being sent back to a life of poverty or worse. They can't complain or ask for more wages or less hours and often they have to pay for their own lodging in the home of their employers. Edit. Grandma. My brother's girlfriend got kicked out of her house and came to live with us. Her family was very poor. Her older siblings had drug problems and her parents drank a lot. When she came to live with us she was absolutely amazed at the fact that we simply had food readily available at all times. Like the fact that we always had food in our fridge. We had food in our pantry at all times and some food storage. Because we stock up sometimes. In our basement. She was blown away by it. I didn't know this until a few years later but apparently she would always sneak food and run upstairs to my brother's room to hide and eat. I guess my dad had found out and let her know that she is allowed to eat anything whenever she feels like it and that she doesn't have to do that. It's been about 5 years now and her and my brother are doing great. She runs her own online business. My brother has a good job and they just bought a really nice house for themselves last month. Edit. Typo. I don't see it on here. But the vast majority of financial products are out of reach for all but the rich. One reason the rich get richer is that they have access to investments that we've never heard of. Ever seen the big short why do you think Goldman Sachs took a week to correctly price DR? Michael Burry's housing short position? Because they were securing that position for themselves and their clients. Those financial instruments are so complicated and the regulation on them so Byzantine that it wouldn't surprise me if Goldman actually didn't do anything illegal. Like they're allowed, at their discretion, to misprice an asset for a certain period of time. Probably under the guise of the assets being complicated to price. But really it's just a buffer for them to get an edge that regular people couldn't believe. Imagine going to a horse race and being able to bet on the horses near the end of the race. Rich people get that. If you are rich you can have a leg up when it comes to organ transplants. I believe there are flight services where you pay a subscription fee every month or year and if when an organ is available it will fly you out right way. Also Steve Jobs gained the system because he was able to get to different transplant hospitals over the country quickly because of his money so he was able to be on the multiple waiting lists. He was on liver transplant lists in California and Tennessee, and I believe the later had a shorter waiting list and because of his severity he was able to rise up the list and get a liver faster than if he was only on the list in California. This practice is not technically against the rules but many view it as unethical. Basically if you need an organ you better be rich. Homes built into old nuclear missile silos. Citizenship to countries that provide some benefit. Tax shelter international travel advantages etc. Education. My neighbor used to get tutored at home by our school teachers and head of departments. Want me to believe they never leaked exams? University is a whole different story from admissions to grades.